Welcome to day 17 and today we're going to talk about principle 9 how to communicate effectively. So many times I have families in my office and you would swear there was a translation screen, be translation screen between the people. One person says something and the other person hears something totally different than what the first person intended. We have to be really careful that we don't garble our hearing with past issues, ways we feel about ourselves, and wrong beliefs that we've carried with us from childhood. These are all things I work through with clients in our breakthrough sessions. And it might be something that for you to think about later if you just seem stuck and you can't seem to get out of your own way and get your feelings out of the way when you're listening to someone else, particularly your children. Now, for the most part, I suggest that it's important to take a deep breath and detach to see how all the principles fit together. Then listen to the emotion behind what your child is communicating. If there's defiance, for example, in most cases your child is feeling powerless, they're digging their heels in, and that might be the only way that they have to feel like they can get your attention. So always play back the emotion that you hear without judgment. Wow, you sound really angry or hurt, or fed up, or excited. And then pause for a second, let it register, and they'll tell you if you're not hearing correctly. They'll say um, what they're really feeling, and then you can say, tell me more about how you're feeling. Tell me more about that. When they say their piece, try to see if there's another way, besides the one that you're uncomfortable with, that they can have their need met. Is there a compromise? I know some parents are pretty uncomfortable with compromising with children. However, the truth is, that's how the world works. If you don't teach your kids communication skills at home and compromise skills at home, they'll stop talking to you and find someone that will actually listen. So if they feel blocked, if they feel shut up at home, they'll become deceptive and not really speak the truth and they'll learn to tell you exactly what you want to hear and then go do what they want. Teach them. Don't let it become a, a power struggle where you have to win. Remember, if, if, if you lose, I mean, if you win, they lose. Nobody likes to lose. Listen, as my friend Jill Camp Melton says in her book, The Power of the Zip, as if it was the oxygen you needed to breathe. Listen as if it's the oxygen you needed to breathe. That is the most important communication tool in your relationships. First and foremost, you need to understand. Then it's easier to make yourself understood. Think of that as you're filling out your workbook exercises today. As Stephen Covey says, seek first to understand and then to be understood. And it'll change your relationships.